Zealand is economically reliant on a dying industry. But it doesn't have to be. I started school at Goodwood Primary. This is a little country school in the Waikato. Every year, my absolute favourite day of the year was Calf Club Day. All of the kids would bring in their pet calf or lamb to show off how cute, fluffy and well-behaved they were. My education, it came full circle when I completed my engineering degree and started working at the dairy factory just down the road from my old school. I've now spent over 10 years in the milk to money industry. First working in dairy factories and labs, which is where I got my Masters of Dairy Science and Technology. Before moving to head office to help make moving and selling dairy products more efficient. This is where I got my Masters of Business Administration. Since then, I've founded my own two dairy startups, the most recent being Evolution Meadows, a plant based dairy alternative. <laughs> Now, dairy, it's a huge topic. So rather than talking about dirty waterways, climate change, animal welfare, health, allergies, or that people are buying less dairy products, my focus is on the commercial reality, on the technology that's coming, and on the massive changes in store for New Zealand as a result. Most of us know that today, dairy is the economic backbone of New Zealand. Every year, it brings in $17 billion. It also hires 38,000 people, mostly in rural communities. It's also the main employer in dozens of small rural towns. But something many people don't know is that other countries around the world they consume all of the milk that their cows produce within their own country's borders. But here in New Zealand, we're actually a bit special. We produce enough milk, not to feed a population one time, but 20 times over. And when you look at this graph, you can see that this means New Zealand cows produce almost 5,000 litres of milk every year for every single one of us. And when you see where the rest of the countries are on this graph, you can see that New Zealand is by far the most reliant country in the world on milk production. So yeah, we're milking it at the moment. <laughs> but New Zealand is also startlingly reliant on milk export. Something else that very few people know is that while we produce massive amounts of milk, less than 2% of that is exported as a liquid. When I talk about the New Zealand dairy industry, I'm not talking about those products that end up in your fridge or in our cafes. In fact, in New Zealand, that's only 4% of the milk that we produce. What New Zealand dairy companies actually do is they make food ingredient powders, usually in high in protein, and they're normally put into 20 kg or 1,000 kg bags. 70% of our milk in New Zealand goes into bags like these. And these fairly anonymous bags of powder, they're seen all around the world to lots of international food ingredient companies. And where it ends up next, might be a little surprising. This is a bunch of products that I got from my supermarket. All of them contain dairy, and most of them contain those dairy ingredient powders. I want you to have a long look and to put your hand up if anything in there surprises you. Something that you're kind of surprised contains dairy, even if it's just the paracetamol. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I was wondering how many people put their hands up. OK. See, like you, most people, they have no clue that this contains dairy. And if they do, they're really unlikely to think about where that dairy came from. Which brings us to a bit of a myth. That our customers love our natural grass-fed dairy. 
Sure, some of them, absolutely. But most of New Zealand's milk turns into food ingredient powders bought by overseas companies who don't really care if that powder started out as milk from a happy cow eating grass in an idyllic landscape. When it comes to food ingredient powders, these companies, as long as that powder is safe and makes the right taste or texture, these companies only want two things. Reliable supply at the right price. Now, when it comes to dairy ingredients, this is actually something we do incredibly well. As a whole country, we've actually specialised right from the farm to the milk tankers to the highly efficient factory to the shipping company and auction house owned by Fonterra. All of it has been specifically designed to make the export of these ingredient powders as efficiently as humanly possible. But there's some technology that's coming. This technology is so radically different and so much more efficient than what we do now that this strategy of ours is not going to be enough. So at the moment, cows eat grass, surprise, surprise, they make milk, and in New Zealand, that's turned mostly into food ingredient powders. There are two technologies coming. The first, plant proteins. This is where the protein gets extracted directly from the plant and turned into an ingredient powder. Now, this has been around for a while. Soy protein powder, for example. I think soy protein tastes a bit rubbish. But the pea and rice proteins, they're starting to work as well as dairy. And it's not going to be long before those ingredient companies can get reliable supply at a better price than dairy protein. And as this technology gets more sophisticated and the price comes down, we're going to start seeing those plant proteins replacing dairy proteins in those day-to-day -day food products. And we won't even notice. The second technology is synthetic dairy. Now, some scientists have convinced yeast to produce dairy proteins. These yeast produce dairy proteins identical to those produced by a cow. Real dairy without the cow. Now, how they do this is they get the special yeast, sugar, water, mix it up, those yeast grow, ferment, and turn that sugar into dairy protein. Now, dairy without the cow, it's an emerging technology, and it has so many challenges ahead of it. But over the next decade, this technology has the potential to create dairy that is actually a lot cheaper than what we do now. So, perfect day. This is a startup in the United States. They've been working on synthetic dairy for the past five years. So far, they've raised 90 million. And earlier this year, they partnered with ADM. Now, ADM, they are the fourth largest ingredient company in the world. These guys, they're huge in wheat and corn ingredients, and they plan on adding dairy to their portfolio using synthetic technology. Cows need not apply. And there are some in New Zealand seeing the opportunity too. So Fonterra, they've recently made a small investment in another US startup called Motif Ingredients. Motif, they're also focused on synthetic proteins, and they've also raised $90 million so far. And another example, New Culture, a company founded by some Kiwis who are currently in Silicon Valley making mozzarella cheese without the cow. What all of this means for New Zealand is that over the next 5, 10, 15 years, these two new technologies are going to be taking chunk after chunk out of New Zealand's dairy ingredient exports. Dairy will no longer be our cash cow. Now, this doesn't mean that I'm going to stop drinking a flat white, or that you won't eat ice cream on a Friday night. But in New Zealand, 
That's where only 4% of our milk goes. The majority of the rest of it gets sent overseas as cheap food ingredient powders. And it's this part of the business that's going to become disrupted as our two new technologies come online. Now, I know that there's going to be a couple of you in this room somewhere who are all, let's embrace these two new technologies, start sending off these new products to future-proof the industry. Um, wherever you are, come talk to me later. I like your enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> but it's unfortunately not quite this straightforward. You see, with the plant proteins, New Zealand just doesn't have the right amount or type of land to produce mass plant crops that can compete on the international market. There is definitely opportunity here, but the story is not straightforward. And when it comes to synthetic dairy, one of the huge advantages of this technology is that you can brew up your proteins in a vat in exactly the same city as your end customers. Way less transport cost, way less environmental impact. So this means we're going to have to come up with other ways to provide meaningful, well-paid work for New Zealanders. But believe it or not, we have actually done this before. In the 80s, wool was a social and economic backbone of New Zealand. Dairy was a much smaller player. This is where we get lots of our glorious cultural icons. Swan dry, cheeky sheepdogs, stubbies. We were forced to reinvent ourselves after synthetic fibres caused the bottom to fall out of the wool industry. And as a result, we have some of the most resilient farmers in the world. We completely reinvented ourselves and diversified after the, the value of wool exports. It dropped 70% since 1989. And there is still a wool industry. It's just not the superstar that it used to be. And for many, this transition, it was really painful. For dairy ingredient powders, there is a bit of a bright spot on the horizon. The global population is projected to hit 9 billion by 2050. That's 1.4 billion more mouths to feed, mostly in developing countries. So lots of demand for affordable, accessible plant and synthetic proteins and for some of the more expensive dairy ingredient powders. All going well, lots of demand in the food ingredient space, but significantly increased competition from our two new technologies. Now, something I know people are talking about a lot at the moment in the industry is shifting New Zealand's focus from these uh, food ingredient powders and onto premium products. And there will absolutely be those wanting to pay more for luxurious, grass-fed, real dairy. But premium products are not what our industry is focused on to date. And this is going to mean a complete rethink for how we turn milk into money. Not to mention that the other dairy exporting companies, countries <laughs> like Denmark, Ireland, they're already scrambling to reinvent themselves in the premium space right now. So yeah, I completely agree. We need to re-engineer the industry to focus on premium products, focus on customers who appreciate who want and are willing to pay a premium for our really amazing grass-fed products. But even then, this premium model, it can't feed a growing world. So where I think New Zealand should really focus is on what we do extraordinarily well. Use our food processing and growing heritage to solve food problems. So in the 70s, uh, when you make cheese, lots of whey was left over. No one really knew what to do with it. So some Kiwis, they came up with whey protein powder, those bodybuilding milkshakes that are so popular. Now whey protein is worth more than cheese. <coughs> Another example is A2 milk. They developed a genetic test that lets farmers pick out the cows that produce A2 dairy protein. A2 can be a bit easier to digest. What's interesting about A2 milk is they do not own cows, and they do not own factories. How they make money is they sell A2 branded products and they license out their technology for others to use. Now A2, they're worth significantly more than Fonterra. Another example is tuners and growers. 
So they have a team creating climate change resistant apple trees and they're looking to sell the rights for growing these new apple varieties in Spain. We could help feed the world by showing others how to grow and process food in a smarter way. Not selling as much stuff. Selling smarts, ideas, intellectual property. Solutions to the world's food problems. Ideas, they can be really difficult to ship. But it doesn't cost you anything to move it to the other end of the world which is a pretty smart approach for a country on the edge of the planet like we are. Not to mention that this approach, it means that we can start solving some of the problems that we know synthetic dairy will have, so we can own another slice of the dairy future. So I came here today to start talking about this before it becomes a problem. Change is coming for the New Zealand dairy industry as we know it. But times of change are also times of extraordinary new opportunities. So let's take advantage. Thank you.